telling you. A very good morning to all of you. It is so special to be here. And from the last three days, we are having a wonderful time of fellowship, time to get to know each other, time to share God's faithfulness in our life. Indeed, this is much, much special. Uh, as I told you, right, this is much different than how we used to have in Zoom. Have you heard of COVID generation? I'll tell you a few things. There was one WhatsApp video that was going around. Okay, there's one kid and he's telling from January till December and he goes off January, February, March, April, May and then he says March, April, May and then somebody's standing beside him. COVID generation. Huh? <laughs> so COVID batch is everywhere. We have COVID preachers as well. Now, believe me, I started two years back on the day of my first message I shared on the Palm Sunday. That was when we had lockdown. And you see, there's so much of freedom when you are on Zoom, right? You have your notes here. When you want two, three people who are your greatest supporter, you keep their windows on. Then you have yourself seeing there's no watch. Okay. There's full, your notes are there. You can go off the time. Nobody is looking at you. So you'll realize uh -uh, time is there. But now here the things are different, right? There, the watch is there right in front. But I'll start my countdown after I have my prayer. So I know I have my 30 minutes. But the thing is then what I did here is, now if in case while I'm sharing my message, I look at you, you give me a smile. And if you see I lost, then give me an even bigger smile. So I'll realize that I've lost and I've come to see my notes again. But then don't worry. I, I, I did some arrangement. I told Jason, I'll be looking at you and you'll give me good smile. So that I know I'm doing very well. You know, that's how brothers cover each other, right? Even if I'm going out, right, Jason will be like, yes, bro, you're going well, go. That's how it is. But so let's, let's uh, submit this time uh, into the hand of God. And let's see what he has for us today. Join with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving in our heart, oh Lord. Because we have every reason to give you thanks. The very reason we are breathing today is because of you. You are the reason for the very joy that we are celebrating today. And as we meet here for fellowship to receive your word, Lord, I submit myself into your hand. Bring your word that your people need to hear. As I submit myself into your hand, O oh Lord. Pray for Holy Spirit to touch, convict, and transform our hearts today. And we submit the rest of the time into your April hand. Thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let me get used to with this speaker as well. Perfect. Okay. The message of the resurrection day is very simple. Christ is risen. He is alive. The power of sin and death has been defeated. It's simple. It's same. It's same. Jesus Christ is risen. He is alive. He is alive. And the power of sin and death has been defeated. The bigger question is to see, are we showing that in our life? Is the power of sin and death in our life has been defeated or not? I think this is closing here. Yeah? One second. One second. It, is it still going or not? Sorry. What is better, yeah? I hope. No. Okay. So, ideally, I would have loved to continue my message after Praveen has left his message on the day of Good Friday. And in one aspect, it's a continuation of his message. As Praveen emphasized, we have to see the message of cross through the empty grave. The message of cross has to be preached through the message of resurrection. And today we'll see and understand Jesus' resurrection, which has happened 
2000 years ago and how it is still working in our lives today through jesus ongoing ministry through the power of holy spirit as he is fulfilling his father's mission that is to reconcile humanity to himself but before we move on to the message of resurrection we would just step back and we will see what's god's purpose in creating humanity and for that turn with me to first peter chapter 1 verse 2 and we'll break this verse into two part and the first part we'll see let me read out the full, full verse who has been chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctifying work of the spirit to be obedient to jesus christ and sprinkled with his blood grace and peace be with you in abundance and first part we'll see for knowledge of god the father now it's not an accident that you and i have come to lord it's not an accident it's not an accident because somebody came and spoke and because that day you were in the best of your mood and hence you responded ah uh-uh, that was not the case because you and i were chosen from the very start of the time as we also read in ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight he has chosen each one of us and now i'm not suggesting here predestination now here it says foreknowledge now foreknowledge does not simply refer to the awareness of what is going to happen so god has a foreknowledge doesn't mean he, he knows everything what's going to happen and so eventually he'll do he knows how we lack so it's not that it's not just simply refer to the awareness of what's going to happen but conveys an added complexity the predetermined relationship in the knowledge of god in other words he knew how we would react he knew that we would need salvation and hence he has decreed salvation even before the start of the time just he has preordained christ to die for our sin and what does that means that means each one of you us is not an afterthought but we are forethought of god we are we were always priceless extremely valuable and we are a super priority for god and that's why he has sent his son jesus christ who would come who would take his sin of humanity on himself and we would be redeemed and that's why he here says grace and peace be yours in abundance that's why he says dear beloved be greatly encouraged by this incomprehensible and profound truth so you and are i are not an accident we are very much planned we are very much chosen now next see sanctifying the work of the spirit to be obedient now here peter is talking about the work of the holy spirit even before we accept jesus christ as our lord and savior now jesus ministry is very relational he is working in the lives of believers and non believers in this world through the power of his holy spirit fulfilling his father's purpose he is not just act, the holy spirit is not just active and just not working in ourselves but it is working in each and every one as we go out and you see so it is the holy spirit that awakens with us the very first faint longing for god and his goodness when someone first approached to us and share his word of god and prayed for us or you met somebody through an outreach activity it is the holy spirit that creates a longing for god it is the holy spirit that says i would like to know him more and for that i would like to know him more it is the one that puts us the recognition into it that he is the lord that's the sanctifying work of the spirit it is with that obedience from the new heart motivated by god's love that we responds to god calling of reconciling to himself 
it is not your and my effort it is through the sanctifying work of christ that we respond to god as he is reconciling himself with the humanity you know the bible teacher wears p and i think let me take ha huh, because i missed out on my slide so it's messed up here and there so the bible teacher wears p sums up the salvation as follows we have been chosen by the father purchased by the son and set apart by the spirit it takes all three if there has to be a true experience of salvation all the three works together and now we'll see how in that the work of all the three are triune god how do we fit into it now let's move to first peter chapter 1 verse 21 through through christ you have come to trust in god through christ none of us have seen god we have seen christ we have heard about him he is the invisible image of god he has introduced humanity to god as we see in you see various in colossians chapter 1 verse 15 image of the invisible god we read in hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 exact imprint of his nature in john 10 verse 30 jesus says i and father are one and we continue to see in uh, later in john chapter 5 verse 19 for whatever the father does that the son does likewise in it is he who through christ we have come to know and trust in god and as we go further let's go to now first peter and verse 21 and then through christ you have come to trust in god and you have placed your faith and hope in god because he raised christ from dead and gave him great glory and we'll emphasize now he raised christ from the dead and gave him great glory do you ever wonder why did god raised christ from the dead what was the purpose the purpose he raised our lord jesus from the dead and ascended him to the father's right hand in glory so that you and i may believe in christ and have hope in god the whole resurrection has happened so that you and i can believe in christ and have hope in god what because our faith is a living faith and our hope is a very living hope yeah it's a confident assurance that when we die we will be delivered from the presence of sin forever and we will receive a new resurrected bodies god has given us faith christ has purchased our faith so that we could spiritually live and he as he rose from the dead so will we rise from the dead and we'll have perfect resurrected bodies he raised christ from dead and gave him the great glory and then we'll see verse 21 the second part and you have placed your faith and hope in god because he has raised christ from the dead and gave him the great glory next i have okay then we'll move to now first peter verse 22 you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth it is the holy spirit that brings the realization into us that we need to be united with our father and what's the one thing that obstruct us from getting united with our father is our imperfectness is a very things that stand in between us and god is our sinful nature and it is the holy spirit that brings the realization into it it is the holy spirit that tell us that we need to be cleansed we need christ christ cleansing power to remove our sin and that's why i said you were cleansed from your sins because we obeyed the truth 
What was the truth we obeyed? We accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We told him that we need him to redeem us because we on our own cannot form that relationship with our God. And as a result, what does it say? So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Now we obeyed. Christ helps us. Uh, the Holy Spirit sanctified us. For what? So that we must show sincere love with each other. Now this love is a very confusing thing. How many times to how many people we say we love you? What does it mean, love? Have you ever wondered? Like for example, if you see here, love in the Bible, it is there for more than 100 times it is repeated. And the New American Standard Bible, 541 times the word love has come. 541 times. And from Friday, ever since Manoa started uh, leading, love, love, love. But I love you, what do I need to do? Do I just tell I love you? But that's okay with Shanti, with some of my close friends. But then going somebody and telling I love you is difficult. Yeah. Love is not there. But then again, it says, if I go back here, you must show sincere love with each other. But then again, it says, if I go back here, you must show sincere love to each other. How can I show sincere love? Because the only thing I know is I love you. I love you too. Ta -ta -ta. Because love is a love is very much an action. It's a verb. It's action. That means we need to do something. And if we need to do something, that means there is some expectation from us to do. And if we read it in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 4 to 8, various definition of love. But if you see each one of it, everything is action. Everything is action. And here, if I again go back and it says, sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Now, if I have to show sincere love, because the sincere love is there within the family. If I have to show that sincere love with each other, how do I show with who are my brothers and sisters? And Jesus says, in Matthew 15, 12, verse 50, whoever does the will of my father, he, who is in heaven, is my brother and sister. Now, suddenly, the periphery of my brother and sister, which is my immediate family, is now extended to all the believers. Whoever does the will of father. And how do I show my love? In 1 John 3, 16 to 18, it says, we know that real love is because Jesus gave his life for us. So we also ought to give our lives to our brothers and sister. Now, the thing are heating up. Now, love is expected to give our life for our brothers and sisters. And our brothers and sisters is no more our immediate family. It extends beyond. And then uh, uh, Apostle John keeps on saying, let us show the truth by our actions. Now, the problem is I cannot play with my own words now. I need to show that with action. And if I have to show that with action, it is no more towards my immediate family. It's towards everyone. Now, how do I do that? Now, if you see, loving somebody whom you know, it's very easy. Because you know them. You can stand in their shoes. You know their joy and their grief. So it is very easy to connect. But imagine somebody whom you don't know. They are individuals to us. For example, let me tell you. Your Dudwala. He comes, gives the milk, goes. The paper fellow. He comes with the paper and goes. Uh, the, your grocery shop fellow. You, he, they are all individuals who serve certain functions. And you know them because they are doing only certain function. Now, it is very difficult for those individuals, for me, to show love because I don't know them beyond what the function they do. Have you ever imagined to chai wala hai, jaha pe hum log office ki tapri pe jaake chai pite hai? Who is he? Now, if I don't know who is he, how am I going to show my love? Because here it says, 
by your actions and the periphery is there so now either something in wrong in this or something wrong in us because we now we need to show now if i cannot know a person i cannot show a love so that means we need to step beyond getting to know people as individual and we need to know them or try to know them as persons now what happened when the individual turns person your chaiwala suddenly has a name your chaiwala knows that you had a bad day you know that your chaiwala's son is going to start the school tomorrow you see that is where the relationships are growing so we need to know people so that our relationship to grow and when relationship grows love fosters now let me tell you for relationship to grow empathy is very important because empathy let, let me read out the definition because i wouldn't do any better justification to it hold on now this is where i need jason giving me a big smile there <laughs> okay empathy is an experience of feeling often involuntary into another person's feeling and because it is a feeling of another person it is through the relationship and hence empathy is a feeling of spirit empathy is a feeling of spirit now let me explain you when let me give you an example now don't confuse empathy with sympathy sympathy is a feeling of soreness if i tell you i lost my phone and i let's say i lost my iphone you will feel sorry about it oh poor sachin must have been an expensive phone whatever but there's a feeling of sympathy sorry for it but if i tell you that on that phone i had some of the pictures of my childhood friends which i had no choice to recover that because it was not connected to internet now you will start feeling my pain my loss and then you will not say oh so sad you will say i can feel you because now you are connected in my spirit your spirit is connecting to my spirit through empathy and when we have our spirit connected it's called a shared dwelling and it is in this connection of empathy our spirit together is connected with the holy spirit and in that very relationship we have jesus present there that's what his word says where two or three are gathered in my name there i am what does that mean in our shared dwelling is the very presence of jesus in our brokenness in my feeling of loss there he is because of his incarnated nature of his humanity he understand our pain and he joins with us in that shared dwelling and when his presence is there through his divine presence we share our life which is we have between each of us with god through his divine nature that's a power of shared dwelling that's a power of empathy that's connects between you and me and when you and i connect that is where we express our love that is when you see what peter was saying show true love love in action is when we connect each other with empathy and that empathy is needed and which means now you have to take that step out of your comfort zone now to know somebody else as a person so for me mr zavier is no over he just comes to say how are you and i say i'm fine how is everything good i need to know him as a person and that's when we'll have a shared dwelling and that's when we'll have christ in us so that's how one of the ways we'll express our love now let me take you to second corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 to 18 what is our love our love is based on christ love that is the centrality of our love which goes out as a passion and it says that's the motivation for us 
now if you and i have not understood or not have received christ's love it is very difficult for us to share that love very difficult and that's why he says christ's love that fuels our passion and motivates us what it motivates us to do that who so that those who live should no longer live self absorbed lives but lives lives that are poured out for him and the one who died for us and now lives again what is that challenging us now you and i if we have to show christ resurrection if we have to show christ love we cannot live the life that we were living self absorbed self centered life it has to be a christ centered life and how we can have christ centered life in verse 16 it says we have a new perspective that refuses to evaluate people merely by their outward appearances you and i have a new perspective you and i cannot judge somebody because of their outward appearances that they had done with jesus you and i now need to take a step ahead and to know people i'll give you a simple example to the coming from a hotel to here the uber fellow ask madam ye ready ho ke kidhar ja raha hai kehte are aaj hamara festival hai na is the sunday to uske liye ja raha hai to then he said acha acha kal hamara bhi festival tha तो शांति से हाँ अभी देखो ना अभी कैसा टाइम आ गया ना नहीं तो पहले कितना हम लोग एक दूसरे के फेस्टिवल में ज्वाइन होते थे सो दिस गाय सडनली इन दैट होल मैप टेक आउट इज फोटो कल हनुमान जयंती में देखो मैं पेटा पहना था एंड सो नाइस एंड नाउ सडनली विद दैट ही नाउ ओपन सी से यू नो आई टेक शांति से बिकॉज ऑफ ईस्टर टूडे यूल हैव लॉट ऑफ राइट टूडे राइट सो क्वेट अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ मनी यूल गेट ही सर नहीं मैडम आज ना मैं छुट्टी लिया है मेरे बच्चे का आज फर्स्ट बर्थडे now suddenly a uber driver an individual who supposed to drop us from one end to another end suddenly is now a person is suddenly a person and in that we have, we had experience with each other shared dwelling now did i share the gospel no i didn't had a time did he accepted christ as the lord and savior and said no perhaps he went and he would do exactly the same thing but in that moment of our shared dwelling we had christ present there we had a very presence of holy spirit working in each other and that is when we gave him a little money and we said please wish your daughter from our side and without doing that his hand were folded no not to me not to the actions i did nothing that's a shared dwelling that's the power of empathy and i would yeah. urge everyone to take that step and move towards empathy try a step ahead and know people as a person without an individual and then we see in verse 17 we are a new creation now if you and i want to show resurrection of christ in our lives then we and i need to be an entirely new creation you and i cannot be our old self now there's one thing and many of the traditional languages have this one unless you step out of your old self you cannot go into the new one you cannot stand on both the boats many of you say right now if you want to show the resurrected christ to the entire society they don't know that the tomb is empty for them the message of the tomb is empty is through your lives is through how you treat them is how you connect with them so it is an entirely new creation but what is the reason for make giving us a new creation giving us a message of resurrection what are we supposed to do and god has made all things new and reconcile us to himself first he reconcile us with himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to god that's the responsibility you and i have is to reconcile others with god and in conclusion you and i need to share the news of resurrection and these news can only be portrayed through our lifestyle in a way we treat others 
in reflecting his love in our actions yesterday pravin showed us empty tomb and we saw the cross that's all we know all the people in the church is very well know the world out there don't know that the christ who has defeated death the christ whose presence in our life removes the sin they don't know they are looking at each you and me and we need to show that love to them because we have been asked love each other as brothers and sisters as brothers and sisters one second that's a zoom moment yeah now if we are reconciled to christ and if we have to reach out to our neighbor to be reconciled with christ we need to ensure that we are in continuous communion with him that we are living a christ centered life we are doing everything to show that we are the new creation allow me to move yeah and here it says we are ambassadors of the anointed christ who carry the message of christ to the world what is the message of christ we are carrying to the world through our lifestyle we are telling each turn back to god and reconcile to him now we can be only reconciled if a christ centered life is characterized by having a daily relationship with him staying in step with him staying in fellowship and communion with our very god following him wherever he takes and allowing him to bring us back on the path if we veered left and right we need to be in communion to him with him and this is the life lived in and by god's grace which he extend to us every day so thus the lord supper declares to the believer that in every aspect of our christian life we don't rely on our obedience and our righteousness but we solely depend upon the grace of a incarnate jesus christ and with the assurance of life abundance in him let me read from 1st corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26 from the passion translation as i lead you in the lord supper and verse 23 onwards i have handed down to you what come to me by direct revelation from the lord himself the same night in which he was handed over he took bread and gave thanks then he distributed it to the disciples and said take it and eat your fill it is my body which is given to you do this to remember me he then he did the same with the cup of wine after supper and said this cup this cup seals the new covenant with my blood drink it and whoever and whenever you drink this do it to remember me now i'll request you all to come and take the communion elements and stay there as i pray and then later we'll take it together 